So the next step uh, in the materials for still higher temperature application is stainless steel. So I will start with what is the exact definition of stainless steel. So as you have to just explain the definition an alloy of iron with chromium which does not get stained or corroded when exposed to environment. I always stress this point again and again. If you will mug the definitions, then you will, I mean there is so much to mug, you cannot remember all the things in that fashion. And when you mug, you remember, oh, somebody told me like this, so I should speak like that. And that there, that is where you fumble, that is where you are unable to explain the thing into that. So try to understand things and try to create your, I am not asking you have to give a definition exactly written in X book or Y book. You create your own definition which explains the thing in a proper fashion. That is the real understanding of the subject. Cramming a definition, I mean maybe somebody has a quiz, he won't know, I want exact definition, that is a different thing. But in understanding day to day life, you have to explain something the way you have understood and it should be correct and precise. That's, that, that is the best way of uh, uh, learning something, you know. So stainless steels are the iron, uh, alloy of iron with chromium which does not get stained or corrode when exposed to normal environment. That is the definition of that. Now, how much chromium is required? That is the next step. Now, your answer. When we start adding chromium in a normal steel, iron carbon alloy, the steel becomes stainless steel at a minimum concentration of 11.5%. Now you understand the connection with that. And such steel, which uh, uh, such composition, which is still in the ferritic structure, is known as ferritic stainless steel. However, there are other varieties of stainless steel, like austenitic stainless steel. Now, austenitic stainless steel. The main alloying elements are nickel and chromium. Nickel is added to convert ferritic structure into austenitic structure and for such a structure you need around 18 percent of chromium with 8 percent of nickel. This is if somebody is asking you explain then you can answer uh, this kind of thing. A metallurgist from IIT Bombay when he goes out, I think you should be very clear what you are talking about. You must be very precise and correct when you say something in that fashion. Explanation comes, ferritic. Just adding chromium to normal steel up to 11.5%. Or you can say the other way, the steel when you add up to 11.5 percent of chromium, it becomes stainless steel retaining the ferritic structure that is called ferritic stainless steel, okay. Austenitic because austenitic phase is stable above AC3 temperature or 773 degree centigrade. So if it has to be stabilized at room temperature, you have to add austenitic stabilizing elements. So when you add austenitic stabilizing elements, the most common is nickel. We will discuss other things also afterwards. 
then you need 18 percent of chromium to then we have duplex duplex means two a stainless steel which has both ferritic and austenitic structure is known as duplex stainless steel martensitic stainless steel now it is exactly same you have studied martensitic transformation in steels now the main problem is that when you take a martensitic steel and exposed to normal environment it starts corroding so if you have to use martensitic uh, 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 microstructure uh, take advantage of micro uh, uh, martensitic hard structure uh, which should not corrode simply you have to add chromium into that but the biggest problem in martensitic uh, 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 structure is that when you add lot of nickel or chromium into that the composition should be such that there must be a austenitic phase and when it is cooled there must be a alpha phase like if you take a simple austenitic structure if austenitic structure is at the room temperature you cannot form martensitic stainless steel so martensitic stainless steels are those compositions which at high temperature has austenitic and room temperature their change in structure is there and then ph stainless steel what is ph precipitation strengthened stainless steel why this category has been made you know i can create hard stainless steel by martensitic stainless steel also but they have some kind of a limitation the another way to create very hard stainless steel is create some kind of precipitate now what are the precipitate we create we take advantage of elements like aluminum copper and these elements form precipitates which and there is a very uh, important uh, difference between martensitic and stainless steel because both create high hardness high strength so how to differentiate that that is also to be properly understood now a very simple way of explaining all the uh, various kinds of stainless steels is by known as scheffler diagram basically scheffler diagram is not a standard way of representing it is basically for a dynamic thing like welding when you do but perhaps if you want to understand in a simple fashion that how all these four stainless steel can generate and what are the factors by which these four stainless steels can be created or um, differentiated then there are two important factors because we make how we make uh, austenitic stainless steel by adding austenitic stabilizing element how we retain ferritic thing by increasing the ferritic stabilizing elements so which means that if i start creating variations between austenizing stabilizing elements and ferritic stabilizing elements and if you plot them i can get all the stainless steel in one diagram and that is what it shows it shows scheffler diagram is between so called nickel equivalent what is nickel equivalent means nickel is the most important austenitic stabilizing element but there are lots of other so when i say nickel equivalent it simply means nickel plus so many other elements
So percent nickel, uh, uh, nickel equivalent is nothing but a list of all stabilizing elements which stabilize austenitic structure. Nickel contribution is 100 percent, cobalt contribution is 100 percent, nitrogen contribution is 25 times. For example, if there is a 0.1 percent nitrogen, then it will add to this percentage as 2.5 percent. Similarly, for uh, oh, I, I have forgot to write the important one 30 percent carbon, 30 into percentage carbon, nitrogen and then 0 0.5 into manganese and 0 0.3 into these are the all copper. So, these are all the austenitic stabilizing elements which what does it mean? For example, if there is a stainless steel which is having 8 percent of nickel, 1 percent of cobalt, it become 9 percent, 0.1 percent of carbon, it becomes 3 percent, 0.1 percent of nitrogen, it becomes 2.5 and maybe 1 percent of manganese into 0.5 plus copper 0.0 percent. So, if you sum up all these things, that is the nickel equivalent in that material, that is called total austeniting stabilizing elements in this thing. So, this y axis is a sum of that, clear? Now, percentage ferritic stabilizing element that is called chromium equivalent because chromium is one of the most important ferritic stabilizing elements. So, in this it is total percentage of chromium plus twice into percentage silicon plus 1.5 into percentage of molybdenum plus 5 into percentage of vanadium plus 5.5 into percentage of aluminum 1.7 into percentage of niobium 1.5 into percentage of titanium and 0.75 into percentage of tungsten. Okay. This you have to remember it and we have to use this thing several times in future also. Now, you have understood this. Now, this plot is nothing but total nickel equivalent that is total austenitic stabilizing elements and total ferritic stabilizing elements. Now, you just see in the beginning, if I have less nickel and high chromium, then I get it start with the ferritic, but as I start uh, increasing the nickel concentration into that, the structure can be martensitic or ferritic or you can say as the chromium concentration increases, you stabilize mostly the ferrite. But if you start increasing nickel, then you find a very clear change into that. You start with the martensitic kind of thing, then you have martensitic plus ferritic, then at some stage you become, okay, uh, you understand like this. First you talk about pure ferritic at very high chromium equivalent you get pure ferritic and at very low chromium equivalent you still get ferritic, but moment you start adding nickel then you get a mixture of all these things and at very high nickel equivalent you get pure austenitic. So, main these things are these two ferritic plus austenitic and this is the duplex A plus F. So, now you can imagine very clearly that if nickel concentration is less and chromium is more, you get duplex. If nickel equivalent is very high, chromium is intermediate, then you get austenitic structure. Slight change into that will make the duplex and these A m plus these things are intermediate phases which are just formed into that and martensitic phase 
the most important part is that you should have relatively less chromium and high nickel only then you can create a situation like that. But very high nickel is also not good because that will change it to osmotic kind of thing. Okay. So, this is the way you can understand the whole thing. Now, now you can all the four uh, three stainless steel you can understand high ferritic stabilizing elements ferrite, high austenitic stabilizing elements austenite and then you play with nickel and chromium you get duplex. That is the main thing to be remembered. Now, basically there are almost you can say hundreds of stainless steels and question is how to remember them. And it is really not possible to remember them by cramming. O304 oh, is this was the best way is to remember stainless steel based upon their problems and usage. Okay, their problems and usage. We start with as a central point the most common stainless steel. What is the most common stainless steel which is which you use every day? Maybe some of you may be having some things in your bag also with stainless steel thing. What is the most common stainless steel? Which is? What is the meaning of 304? This is the basic stainless steel which has 8 to 10 percent of chromium uh, nickel, 16 to 18 percent of chromium. That is called the basic austenitic stainless steel, which we almost see everywhere at home, at offices. You put your eyes, you will see various kinds of stainless. These are most common stainless steel. Now, now I am making a statement which you will say, why the hell I am saying that? Although this is the most common stainless steel, but most useless steel when we go for industrial applications. The reason is that you have created stainless steel, but when I go to industry, I have a different kind of problems. And I find this stainless steel is not good. So, you can remember all the stainless steel keeping this as the central point and try to find out what are the problems into that and in order to solve this problem you create a new stainless steel. So, if you will remember like that I can tell you for the whole life you cannot forget what are the various stainless steel and how they are used and how they are formed. So, the central point is 18-8 stainless steel. Now, one of the biggest problem of stainless steel is pitting. You know, you understand pitting corrosion? What is pitting corrosion? Uniform corrosion. Next one is localized corrosion. So, localized corrosion kya hota hai? Ki the whole surface is clean, not affected, but at one localized point, there is a small rust that is called pitting. So, pitting corrosion is the most dangerous problem of stainless steels. First of all, I, I think I should just come back to that. When we say that stainless steel is stain free, what is the reason for that? Chromium, but this is not a very correct definition, chromium forming oxide you have to always say a chromia based passive layer of thickness. What is the thickness? 30 angstrom, not in microns. Microns is this much. Angstrom is thickness that is the kind of thickness of layer of this. That is what I am saying. You people are not reading those kind of things. Stainless steels are stainless mainly because of a passive layer of chromia which is formed 
by the reaction of chromium with the air, normal air to form a passive layer whose thickness is approximately 30 to 100 angstrom. You know what is angstrom? 10 to minus 8 centimeter, 10 to minus 10 meter. So, you just imagine micron is 10 to power minus 6. So, it is not micron, it is angstrom. Now, what is the meaning of passive layer? Meaning of passive layer is that such a small thickness of this thing acts as a strong barrier to normal environment. Normal environment when we say, we say humidity, we will say oxygen. So, it forms a very nice thing into that. But the problem is when the environment has lots of chlorides this passive layer becomes weak and wherever small amount of chloride fits into that, that is why you see most of the stainless steels uh, used in our day to day application, utensils at home, utensils ko hum daily saaf karte hain. Although we eat food, we have we, uh, 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 all over vegetables and everything has salt, but then we do not allow it to stay. But talk about industrial environment, there is a stainless steel tank next to a uh, sea environment. Environment has around aerosols of chlorides, it keeps on sticking. Many industrial things, nobody cleans them, you know. So, if they do not clean it, the chloride concentration will keep on increasing. And once a small place is formed with the everyday chloride concentration will go on increasing and one day when critical concentration is reached, it will corrode, it will create a pit. That is the biggest problem of stainless steel. And you know one of the biggest environment is marine. So many applications in marine, our ships, our offshore structures, our uh, you know a uh, lot of installation on the offshore and offshore, even aeroplanes, most of the airports are next to the sea. So that is a big problem into that. Now a normal passive layer of chromia is quite good in normal environment, but it is bad in chloride environment. And chloride environment of even 50 ppm or so is enough to cause this kind of a damage. So, to overcome this problem of pitting, what do you do? You try to stabilize the chromia layer. What is the method of stabilizing chromia layer? Molybdenum is one of the most important element which stabilizes chromia layer. But what does molybdenum does? Molybdenum creates a molybdate layer and this chromia layer with molybdate layer becomes a very, very stable layer. That is why the next generation of stainless steel is which one? 316 and 316 has how much molybdenum? 2.5 percent. 2.5 percent molybdenum it is there and that is enough to take it to 2000 ppm up to 2000 ppm of this thing if you 316 stainless steel can take care of that. That is still not enough. So, you go for more molybdenum next is 317 in that how much is there? 3.5 and when you talk about sea water, sea water at higher temperature, you know all ships and other kind of things where the sea water is used for many applications, this normal 316, 317 do not work. So, we use super austenitic stainless steel. 
what are super oscillating stainless steel where molybdenum level is from 4.5 to 6% the problem of pitting add molybdenum and you create various kinds of I, I will show you in the next slide 316 317 or super austenitic stainless steel so that is in this category you remember now three more stainless steel second most important problem of stainless steel is sensitization so who will tell me what is sensitization and which results in the formation of uh, intergranular corrosion now this sensitization is the biggest problem so whenever stainless steel is used for uh, high temperature application where stainless steel is welded this is the biggest problem under that and the range of the temperature is also very very from 410 degree centigrade to 900 if stainless steel is exposed to this kind of uh, if stainless steel is exposed to this temperature range then sensitization can occur now as you told sensitization is nothing but reaction of chromium and carbon so how it can be solved and suppose i don't want to add titanium what is the normal carbon in stainless steel so how much we reduce so what is this called low carbon stain so now we find that 304 make it 304l 316 make it 316l 317 make it 317l so l variety is simply reduction of carbon from 0.08 to 0.03 so you remember another three stainless steel okay now suppose you know what is the biggest problem reducing carbon I, I, and in the same way other thing is increase chromium increase chromium because basically it is a depletion of chromium so by reducing chromium carbon i am trying to avoid chromium carbide formation that's why retain chromium second thing is increase chromium so you will remember 302 310 which have chromium level from 22 to 24 okay so remember another two five more now some biggest problem is that if you add a reduction of carbon from 0.08 to 0.01 is a very costly process so the other alternative is i want to avoid chromium carbide formation na so so you add another element which forms a stronger carbide than chromium so that is what are, what are these called stabilized stainless steel these are called 3 1347 categories in 347 categories we have either niobium or tantalum and the concentration is just 0.1% so another two stainless steel it can also be done by titanium there is another stainless steel which is called 321 okay so how many you remember already 10 so with these two effects itself you have already remembered more than 10 stainless steels okay next problem is high temperature like in the case of uh, uh, sensitization problem if, if is chromium in the same way when i use chromium uh, stainless steel for high temperature application i protect the steel from chromia oxide formation here we use chromia oxide in the room temperature we say passive chromium layer, chromium oxide layer now when a selective chromium oxide layer forms what will happen 
there will be depletion of chromium in the just next to the matrix of oxide and this will with time form deleterious oxide and protection will be reduced. So, for high temperature what is required? More chromium. So, same thing which are of 22 chromium 310 or 302 can be used for high temperature application. Next problem is strength. Strength and what is called super plasticity. And to a certain extent, the stability and corrosion resistance. Because we find that uh, uh, both ferritic and austenitic stainless steels have some kind of, okay, first I will tell you about ferritic stainless steel. Now I find that uh, this pro problem of chloride that is more for austenitic stainless steel. But I, when I have a ferritic stainless steel, the chloride attack is very less known for ferretic stainless steel. So, how should I create ferretic stainless steel? Simply remove nickel, you get all ferretic stainless steel. Okay. But ferretic stainless steel have their own problem. They have a very low strength and they are relatively soft. But they have some advantages. So, now I say that if I create a structure which has both phreatic and austenitic stainless steel, I can create a wonder. So, we found that phreatic is soft, but it is chloride attack free and sensitization problem in phreatic stainless steel is very less. We will explain in the next thing why. Remember this question, why ferritic stainless steels are less prone to sensitization. So, the two advantage of ferritic stainless steel, no chloride attack and less sensitization. Two negative point of austenitic stainless steel, chloride attack and sensitization. So, which means that if I join these two, then even if there is an attack occurs by chloride at the austenitic grain, moment it reaches the ferritic grain, the damage will be blunted there. That is the advantage when we do with that. So, with this kind of thinking, duplex stainless steel were made. But along with that, you get another advantage is which I just told you, super plasticity. High strength and so, how you make duplex stainless steel? Remember Scheffler diagram. Reduce nickel, increase chromium. So, you create duplex stainless steel A plus F. Okay. So, you remember another set of duplex stainless steel. One of the biggest problem of uh, stainless steel is what? And now I am talking from mechanical point of view. What is that? Even yesterday I mentioned in the paint class. You remember I mentioned what about stainless steel? They cannot be work hardened. That is why if you want to make a very uh, complicated component by stainless steel, which has a very sharp edges and sharp machining thing, stainless steel is not very good. Because it cannot be machined very nicely onto that. So, how to increase the machinability of stainless steel? You add either sulfur or selenium. Sulfur is dangerous from the point of corrosion. So, people add selenium. That is called 302 SE. To increase the machinability of stainless steel, you add some amount of sulfur selenium that makes them machinability of that. pH stainless steel, add elements like aluminum and copper or titanium 
which will form precipitate and hence strength increases from 575 mega Pascal to 1200 plus. And in the same way, you create multistrick stainless steel. Again, looking into Scheffler diagram, you have to reduce nickel to much lower level and also chromium, you bring it to that level, low it so that at room temperature you have ferritic and high temperature you have austenitic. That is the only way you can create martin sticks, otherwise you cannot. That is why normal austenitic stainless steel cannot be martin stick stainless steel. So that is the remember. Is that all? So, so you see by remembering one you can just create a domain of various kind of thing and with a very clear understanding why I am making other stainless steel that is how it is done. And now this is the diagram which is what I have just told you can see into that all these numbers and every kind of thing. This book is one of the book only for stainless steels. It is called Corrosion Stainless Steels by John Cedrics. This book is there in the library and very nice book for stainless steel things you know. Okay. So this diagram is uh, very much there into that. So what I have just told you exactly same things with the various stainless steel numbers and other things are written into that. So spend some time on this table and try to remember what is really happening into uh, that. And this is the way you have to, because when I told that you reduce nickel and chromium, you get duplex stainless steel, but then there are 10 different duplex stainless steels. So what is the difference into that? That is a separate issue. Similarly, when it came Martin stick stainless steel, I say reduce nickel, reduce chromium, but then there are another five such kind of stainless steels are there. So that is a separate issue, but at least you know why another stainless steels are made. Okay. And like we have a super austenitic stainless steel where we add very high concentration of uh, molybdenum or nitro and nitrogen, in the same way we have super ferritic stainless steel. Both when we say super word, super ferritic, super duplex, super austenitic. In your mind, you understand it is high molybdenum. So whether it is a super ferritic, whether it is a super austenitic, in everywhere we are talking about high molybdenum of the order of 4.5 percent or so. Uh, so now, now, now the question is that uh, you have you, you have got a very strong view of uh, various kinds of stainless steels.